All right, hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Today, I'm finally going to give my honest thoughts on Spider-Man No Way Home. As you guys know, I made a breakdown of No Way Home. And I wanted to go over certain stuff that has been on my mind ever since I saw it. Ever since I've seen videos and stuff of it. <clears throat> And I wanted to go over, first off, the ending spell. See, this is where, really, where my mind was open up to suggestions. I was, I, I was, I was like, alright, Peter's getting a fresh new start. He can just go back, he can catch everyone back into his forte. But when Peter walks into that cafe and he sees MJ with the cut above her eyebrow, she realizes how much her knowing his identity has hurt her. She knows he knows that and he he and he hesitates to do that and also with it, I don't know if MJ and Ned know this in the movie, but I I personally believe that they don't know that Peter will take a bullet for them. They're, he will take a bullet to save them. He'll do anything he can to make sure they are safe and well, that they are not in danger or anything. And kudos to everyone who worked on the movie and stuff like and it feels like with Ned he's known Peter for a while they've become really good great friends and the guy in the chair and he doesn't want to lose that he's found some he know he knows Peter and he and he cares about Peter so he doesn't want to give up what what he what the experiences he's had and and I feel like that with MJ knowing his identity let's make one thing clear MJ figured it out so it's basically her fault that she is in danger and it's kind of Peter's fault for kind of admitting it he should have just played it off but when I tell you MJ was shutting them down, immediately he, she was shutting them down. So Peter had no choice but to confess. And it feels like with MJ, with her relationship with Peter, she has found someone that she loves and she knows they love her for the way she is and, and her darkness, her brutal honesty. <laughs> and it feels like it's not that she she thinks that Peter cannot live without her. She know he can and she she really believes that with with or without her, she he is still the same person. Well, technically not, but that's not her fear. It's her fear of l having to start back over again and having to leave Peter alone in the dark. It's really sad because, like, we see it in her eyes at the end of the movie that she doesn't want to lose Peter from her life. And the fact that, to be honest, I feel like if Mysterio didn't die or if Peter did not go to Doctor Strange to help him, I think I think MJ and Ned's fate would have been completely different. That's just my honest truth. I think it would have been completely different if it... I, I really hope we get like a director cut of the movie. To see how, or like an or like a Tom Holland or Zendaya or Jacob cut of the movie, I would really love to see Zendaya's cut because she seemed like she had a, a completely different version of the movie in mind. So, 
So it just kind of hurts to see that MJ and Ned have to watch their their friend slash slash all right slash boyfriend well slash boyfriend for MJ and best friend for Peter best friend for Ned. It's hard for them to see their own best friend walk away from them knowing that they are never going to be the same. And we see it in both of their eyes. We see it in both of their eyes that they don't want to leave Peter defenseless and alone. Even though he can stop a bus with his bare hands, that doesn't mean that he... To think that Peter has lost everything in this movie... It, I can relate in so many different ways, because, like, just seeing Peter so heartbroken and defenseless, knowing that now he has no one to go to, knowing now he has, like, no one to really go to or talk to, because to think that Peter has lost... His in his his affiliation with Stark Industries. He's lost. He's lost his mentor. He's lost his mentor, Tony Stark. And Peter still grieves for that. He's lost Aunt May. He's lost so many things. He almost lost MJ, which I think that would have hit him more harder than anything in his life because. He has found someone he loves to, just to see him them die right in front of his eyes. And really, I kind of see that last scene, not the cafe one, the sweet scene between Peter and MJ as a final, a final goodbye. And that really just hurts to watch in theaters with other people around. It really just hurts to watch just seeing this 18-year-old kid, charming as ever, has managed to snatch a best friend, a girlfriend, everything. He's cut all... He basically has lost everything except for his role of being Spider-Man. He's lost his friends, his family. And it's really hurting to watch that happen right in front of his eyes. He and Aunt May died in his arms, and that must have been tra- If that was, like, one of us, that must be traumatizing to watch. You would be scarred for the rest of your life. And to think that this- And, and, and Tom and Zendaya and Jacob were right about this movie. This movie is flippin' brutal. It- it- it it's not holding back. It it's not having pity on anything in the movie. It's it's putting Peter into a situation where he can't use his alter ego as Spider Man as anything anymore. He can't really use his alter ego as Spider-Man anymore. He doesn't have that anonymity he once had. He's basically a, a help in despair. He's nothing. And people see him as nothing now. They're like, oh, you're not so tough now that your identity has been shouted to the world. And that's exactly what Mysterio was trying to do. He was trying... To make and I and I feel like Mysterio's message was a big like kind of just like this to Peter. I kind of just see it that way. 
I really do see it that way, and I'm not lying. Like, this movie hit me pretty flippin' hard in theaters. The amount of flippin' moments that were flippin' brutal to watch. Having to watch an 18-year-old kid that cares about everyone. To see so many people die in his arms... And him having to deal with it. As I said, it. Oh, same thing with like. With like Scarecrow and Batman. And Batman Arkham Knight. When he said. When he said, I'm going to set you free. Free to see the world. While your friends and family are hunted down and killed. That is what Mysterio. That is what that. If Peter didn't cast that spell, that is what would happen if those villains stayed in that universe. His hunt, his loved ones would be hunted down and killed, just like Aunt May was. Aunt May is in imminent danger. She is. She, she is endangered by the Green Goblin. That is what that means. And him saying, "Peter, Peter, Peter, no good deed goes unpunished." He really means that. He means, just like at the end, like, he, Peter did a good deed by stopping the villains. But he paid a huge price for it just to get the villains back to their universe. They have, yeah. He he paid the ultimate price. He did, nothing was holding him back. And it's funny, because, like, you you come into these theaters for laughs, and now, and now you're sitting there on your flippin' backside, just flippin' wondering what's gonna happen next. And I feel like no other, like, I, I understand the concept they were going for, but I feel like, No teenager or human or adult should have to go through that type of pain. Especially a teenager, because if you grow up, or actually, especially a kid, you grow, if you have to grow up with knowing that you have failed to save people, you have failed, just like Peter thinks he has failed to protect Aunt May, he's failed. He failed to protect the one he loves. That's why Peter grieves on top of that rooftop. Because he knows that he has failed to protect the ones he loves. And that's why... And I really do get the shoulder to cry on part. Because that scene is a really big representation of what Peter is going through in this movie. He's having to hold back all of his emotions to to have that mask on. You have to kind of hide yourself from your emotions to flip and just be able to be Spider-Man. And the stuff that hits Peter pretty hard in this movie... Or Aunt May dying, him having to lose everything. You got people in the world that have nothing to lose, but then you got Peter who has technically everything to lose. And that's just a visual representation of what it is to be Spider Man, to be a teenager. You make mistakes in your life, you make. Bigger and bigger mistakes as your years go on. And that's what Peter's really feeling in this movie. That he has made multiple mistakes. And he doesn't know how to reverse them. Peter sees the world as an anonymity. He sees it as a thing that can be fixed. That's why he goes to Doctor Strange and say like, hey, can you fix this? And Doctor Strange severely agrees because Pe- this seemed like it was hurting Peter. And as Peter said, this is just not about me. This is hurting a lot of people. Inclu- 
That's MJ, Aunt May, Ned, Happy Hogan. All the people he knows, it's hurting them. Even though you might see it and not see it. It's especially hard for, like, Ned, MJ, Ned, MJ, and Aunt May. Because with Aunt May, she's having to watch her nephew get hunted down. And, and stuff. She's, he's having to watch, she's having to watch him get hunted down. Like, with Ned, he's having to watch his best friend going through the trial and tribulations of life. He's, but this is on a whole different level. But yeah, that's my honest thoughts, and with... And with MJ, she's having to watch her boyfriend get hunted down. So, yeah, that's my honest thoughts on the situation. Peter is going through tough times. I really hope we get to see more of this in the MCU. I feel like Spider-Man 4 would be a great way to go for this movie. I'm, I'm hoping that we get the backstory in Doctor Strange... Because as we know, Doctor Strange is a lead, is a follow up movie to Spider Man No Way Home, so I'm really hoping we get some backstory of the spell in that and what it affects, what it has done. Because if it, so yeah, that's my honest thought. See you guys next time. Peace.